E aí, gente! Bed Brewer aqui! Today, we're going to be brewing up some high-proof alcohol called a liqueur. Now, I'm going to be actually brewing a three one-gallon batches. I'm going to brew them all together. Uh, go ahead and get moving from there. So what I've got is one and a half gallons of water, and I'm going to add to that eight and a quarter pounds of sugar. Now for your first batch, I would always recommend that you go with a kit, and I'll talk about those kits here in a few moments. Uh, but you're gonna be brewing up about a half gallon of water, warming up about a half gallon of water, and adding about two and three quarters uh, pounds of sugar into this for your first batch. So again, I've got about one and a half gallons of water in my brew pot, and uh, I'm gonna let it warm up for a little bit, probably get it to about uh, 100 degrees. Then I'm gonna go ahead and start adding in my sugar so that it dissolves completely. All right, so we've got it to about 112 degrees, and I'm gonna start adding in my sugar and stirring it in. Again, our goal is to get all of this in the solution so that uh, there's no powder or anything. All right, I'm going to continue mixing this in and then we'll be back. Now we're going to add about a gallon and a half of water into our fermenter so that we can top off a full three gallons of liquid. Now we're going to pour our warm sugar into our fermenter. Now again, if you're using glass, it's the water in there is gonna absorb the thermal shock, but I do prefer using plastic again because you don't have to worry about it shattering. Now that brown color is from that uh, two pounds of light brown sugar that I put in here, and I did that to give it a slightly different flavor than just regular corn sugar. It's gonna give it a little bit more of a molasses flavor. All right, now we're going to add our super yeast to two and a half cups of water. Now we're going to want to uh, sanitize this to make sure that we're not introducing any bacterium. There we go, now we're going to let it dissolve for a few minutes. Now when you do that, you're gonna get a really good odor, a bread, bready odor, and uh, that's okay. That's uh, what it's supposed to uh, smell like. Then we're going to pitch our yeast. to the fermenter, get as much as you can in there. Then I'm going to use a sanitized paper towel over this instead of an airlock. Now one of the things that you should know about a high alcohol brew is that it needs oxygen. And so I'm gonna go ahead and oxygenate it a little bit as well. Now because we do require more oxygen than normal, we do need to come over and agitate this probably every day. Now I'm gonna allow this to ferment for two weeks, even though it probably only needs about uh, seven to eight days. I wanna make sure that I get uh, full fermentation, um, plus I'm gonna have to add some uh, activated carbon or powdered carbon to this, and that's gonna adhere to anything that might get in here as far as uh, microbes is concerned. So it's day three and I'm starting to see some bubbles, which is an indication that fermentation is happening. Now I've been agitating this at least once every three hours or so during the day. Uh, you can see the bubbles a whole lot better. And it's been four days and you can see that the yeast is incredibly active. The um, carbon dioxide bubbles up on top, what we normally call the croissant, is um, quite high, it's about an inch and a half. 
You can see the fermentation has slowed to us crawl. Uh, there's very few uh, bubbles left and that's really because I just agitated it. I'm going to allow it to finish uh, fermenting for the rest of the day. Then I'm going to cold crash it overnight. Then I'm going to go to the next step. Alright, so I'm letting it cool down and uh, then a little bit later tonight I will go ahead and rack it over. It's what we look like after a day in the cold crash. You can see we, we're almost uh, opaque up here. We can almost see through it and uh, as we come down it does get cloudy and it looks like we uh, don't quite have all of the sediment um, flocculated down so we're going to go ahead and allow to allow it to cold crash another day okay it has set for a full 24 hours or 48 hours uh, over what it did before and you can see that uh, it's quite clear from this point up and it looks like our sediment is pretty well gathered down at the bottom so I'm going to go ahead and rack it today. We're moving from the better bottle fermenter over here to our glass fermenter. And uh, in beer brewing, we would call this the secondary, but uh, what we're doing here is we're cleaning up, getting rid of the yeast. We're going to uh, put some carbon, activated carbon, to uh, clear up the uh, impurities. Finished racking into the carboy and uh, there might be a little bit of bubbles moving in the airlock, but that's because this is actually warming up. Uh, I did cold crash it at 40, I'm sorry, at 50 degrees, and it is 80 degrees in here, so air is expanding. Over here, I have the reclaimed yeast, and over here, I have the uh, product so that I can taste it to make sure that it's uh, fully attenuated or that uh, all of the sugar is gone. You can see that I added the activated carbon. Now I'm gonna go ahead and shake this around and this whole container should become pretty much black as death. Okay, so this is quite a bit lighter than what I was expecting. Um, I'm guessing that the reason is because I used uh, three times the amount of liquid as what they generally call for. Uh, this is about the color that I was going for. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and mix it up a little bit more. Now it's gonna need to sit for at least three days. Okay, I'm also going to leave this uh, open for a little while. While uh, it may continue to ferment, I don't think it will. I tried the uh, alcohol that was produced and I don't taste any sweetness. So I believe it has fully fermented. Now, as you can see, all of the charcoal has sedimented down and it's quite a bit clearer. So now what we're going to do is stir in some kiosol finings. I am going to use an old, small racking cane to uh, stir it in gently. First we sanitize. Now we have some warm water and we're going to mix in the chatson findings. go and then again give it another little stir here and now we are going to allow this to set for a few days 
while everything settles out again. So you can see it is nice and clear, so we are going to rack this into my bottling bucket and add the potassium sorbate, then we're going to move it into some bottles and uh, add flavors. Okay, so we're going to add the potassium sorbate to the bottling bucket. Just gonna sanitize my scissors, open up the packet, and And now we're going to start the auto siphon and start racking down the liqueur into the bottling bucket. Okay, so now everything is in the bottling bucket as you can see and now we're going to start uh, racking over into our one gallon jug so that we can get the flavoring added. So now we're gonna go ahead and add the glycerin to this one because that's what the recipe calls for. And I'm gonna shake this up a little bit. Go ahead and put the top on here. Went ahead and tried a little bit of that so that I could also increase the headspace and make room for the flavoring. Uh, and it does add quite a bit of sweetness. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add the flavoring for the directions. And I'm going to shake this up as well. Now the directions say to add between two cups and three cups of sugar to taste, uh, but these things are always pretty sweet for me. So I'm gonna go ahead. Yeah, this is already sweet enough for me, so I'm not gonna add anything. Cherry brandy, it's pretty good. It does have a little bit of a medicine-y flavor to it, but it does give you that cherry brandy flavor. Uh, the Mexican coffee is Awesome. I would definitely recommend that. I've used that a number of times. This I just wanted to try something new. Um, and one of my friends did use the uh, creme de mint. Uh, he compared it to Scope, which I'm not sure is a bad thing because creme de mint does taste like Scope. Um, but yeah, so the nice thing about these kits is that uh, you do get all of the ingredients to go ahead and brew. And like I said, I just used the ingredients for the one gallon kit, but I brewed up three. It actually turned out to be three and a half gallons. And I'm going to use the uh, rest of it to go ahead and make some other flavorings. Join us over the next couple of weeks while we work with different flavors with this uh, liqueur base. And uh, if you haven't yet subscribed, give me a like if you learned something. Feel free to comment down below. If you have also used the classic liqueurs brewing kits and what your experience was and what you thought of the flavor that you brewed up. Until next time, have a good one.